The question you're all wondering is, who slid into whose DMs? You went on like so many dates in front of me. Are you lesbian? Does he fund your travels? How often we get intimate. When are you getting married? Hey guys, it's Ruby and welcome back to my channel. Today is a really fun video. We're gonna be doing a Q&A for you guys since y'all have so many questions about our relationship and just us as individuals. So I'm excited. You can introduce me. Sorry guys. So for those of you who don't know, <laughs> this is my boyfriend, Christian. Hi guys, my name's Christian. Ruby and I have been in a relationship now for two years and a little bit and obviously you guys see you know some of the highlights you guys see some of the behind the scenes but this is a fun opportunity to get some of your questions and maybe give you a bit more of a behind the scenes that you don't get to see every day yeah so i went ahead and did like a little poll on instagram and you guys submitted a ton of questions so let's get started first question is story of how you met now this is a question people always ask when they first meet us and Ruby's always the one like telling me to tell the story. So I guess I'll take it away. I guess the question you're all wondering is who slid into whose DMs? She slid into mine. <laughs> but wait, we'll explain why in a second. So about three years ago, I got a DM from Ruby's Travels back when she was Ruby's Travels on Instagram. My OG Insta name. And um, she was basically saying, hey, like I'm working uh, to basically license travel content for a database where we're going to basically have travel content. I don't, I don't even know what it was, to be honest. The pitch was rather businessy, and I was just so busy. So I literally he responded. was one of like 100 people. So don't think you were special or anything. Don't worry. I, I didn't feel super special when I read that <laughs> message. So I, I answered it, and I'm like, oh, no problem. Like, here's my assistant's email. And that was pretty much the last time we talked for yeah. the majority of a year and a half or something. Mm -hmm. And then time goes by. I ended a previous relationship and uh it was a bit of a lonely time in canada because it was the pandemic the pandemic was going on um i was about a month into a breakup and you know when you're in a breakup you kind of want to get moving you don't want to be in one place and so i was starting to look at lisbon portugal i was already looking at flights and i was trying to find ways just to kind of keep busy but then simultaneously i was also on instagram seeing stories from ruby and uh when she had DM'd me, I, I had followed her back and we never talked until basically this point yeah. where I saw her posting the most incredible stories from Tulum and the rest of the world was all closed down. So I was like, damn, like that looks kind of fun. That looks like a good time. So I sent her a message and I was like, hey, is Tulum open? Uh, yeah, do you want to tell them the real message? E well, OK, but that doesn't come yet. That doesn't that didn't happen yet. No, that that was before that. That's how you broke ice to talk. That was the was first it? thing you ever oh, DM'd no. me personally after business. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so okay, okay, fine. Basically, I have my my best friend in the whole entire world. I was I've been roommates for her with her for the last few years. And I don't know why he got this idea. I know why. But he uh, just randomly messaged me saying, Are you lesbians <laughs> I no said, there's no problem with that I, I said it are you guys together i said are you are you guys I, together we can pull up the dm okay we should pull up the dm really yeah, that's all i'll go we'll do it at the end so I'll here it is scroll. this is the evidence <laughs> i hope it didn't backfire and so ruby's like what are you talking about because she was always posting this one blonde girl i'm like they must be dating they weren't dating so the she best friend in the entire world this i suppose that was the icebreaker if if her that was turn of events is correct <laughs> and at this point i said you know tulum looks amazing um is it open is it all good there because of the pandemic and she was like yeah it's so amazing oh my god you should totally join yeah, us a very nice person and again i was thinking lisbon i just wanted to get away from home and, and just keep busy at this point and uh so i was like okay, like she's pretty into me. This girl really wants me. What's up? Myself. I was like, this is pretty cool. And um, so she was like, yeah, you need to join us. Like me and my friends are all down in Tulum. And so later that week I had uh, drinks with some friends, my best friends. And I was like, guys, look, I'm either going to Tulum or I'm going to Lisbon. But there's one catch. If I go to Tulum, this girl wants me to go. And when I showed the Instagram account to one of my best friends, she's like, Dude, you're an absolute idiot. Why are you even asking me this question right now? Book that flight. And surely enough, I did. I left literally like, I think five days later. I went to Tulum. I didn't even have my own ticket booked. And she wasn't even there anymore. No, <laughs> I left. Yeah, she was gone. So I did 
honestly, the like uh, I just had the best time. I was just working out every day, uh, dealing with obviously moments of extreme sadness, just trying to keep busy because I was out of a, a long term relationship. And um, as I was kind of enjoying life in Tulum, um, I got another message from her, I guess, two weeks later that she was actually coming back. And so her and a few friends arrived and for almost an entire month, we just hung out like as friends, but we, yeah, I, had I was no literally, interest. I went on dates in front of her. Yeah. With other people. He went on like so many dates in front of me. I would see him just go off and take girls to dinner, come home. You know, it, it's interesting how a relationship started because I just, I wasn't, I was so focused on myself during this time. I did not see myself going into a relationship with anybody. And I just thought it was nice, but nothing else beyond that. I just saw you as a friend. And I didn't make any moves. (laughs) I didn't make any moves. The the environment wasn't right because there was just a friend dynamic that like, you know, I was kind of joining your friend group of like eight people. And I could just tell that with this, the way things were going, I was like, I don't really feel like asking you out is the right move right now. Yeah. So I dated outside of the friend circle for a couple of moments. There might've been a person or two. I don't know. Um, and, and it was just kind of cool how that, I actually think that's a positive, how that all came to be. I love that. That's like my favorite way to start a relationship just to be best friends. with. There were no expectations. Exactly. But one day I had the courage, courage and the moment where, you know, it was basically just her and I finally, she, I was able to break her away from her friend group. And uh, I asked her to come on a date. And I, I honestly, if there's one thing I was uh, learning in this moment of my life, because I haven't really dated much. I've, I've had uh, a few serious relationships. It was a moment where I was starting to learn confidence and uh, in, in relationship, at least in dating. And so I was just like, look, ask her. Nothing's going to go wrong. You know, she's shown interest before, even though I felt like we'd taken a step back here from their DMs. Her DMs were like, oh my God, you have to come. And then when I saw her in person, I was like, oh, I guess I just misread it. Like, we're just going to be friends. That's fine. (laughs) At least for now. But I I was like, look, you don't ask, you don't receive. So I told her, hey, I've really enjoyed, you know, hanging out with you as a friend, but I want to get to know you better. I want to have the opportunity to just be the two of us. It was very sweet. And um, it was sunrise as we were watching over yeah. a beautiful, the most uh, beautiful beach view in Tulum. Tulum. I was shocked. I was because in this moment in my life, I feel like if you're uh, a girl and you're trying to impress a guy, you're going to put on your best face. You're going to always be dressy and just not really act like yourself. And I was truly uh, a million percent myself. I was being funny. I was acting goofy. And I just l- couldn't believe that he liked me like a guy liked me i don't know so hard to believe right (laughs) so i was really shocked um but i was really happy that you asked me and you Mm. were just so sweet and vulnerable so i appreciated that and i set up the the best date i've ever set up in my life yeah that the the first and the last best date he's ever ruby's only had one date better (laughs) than the one i brought her on Uh, yeah you said some guy took you on a helicopter oh yeah that was really cool but my date was still better yeah, the intention was there. It was really beautiful. No, but my date was literally better. I it was amazing. I was blown away. I was. You were supposed to. You were supposed to say that was not the best date. Um, you're right. <laughs> no, this was the best first date because he. Tell I, them what I did. I love when you know. I just love intention, and I love when a person's genuine and they try hard. And so he took that. He he saw that I was a, a girl who just wasn't easily swept off of her feet, off of her feet. Um, so he really put a lot of intention into it and energy and thoughts. So um, it started off by picking me up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then he took me to a spot that is one of the most beautiful beach clubs in Tulum. And we had a great like breakfast brunch there mm-hmm. and just started off the morning, uh, I guess, getting to know each other. I was really Literally. nervous. I spent the entire day like looking for what mm-hmm. to wear we with my friend. We had a private friend. little cabana on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the it was beach. beautiful. It was a great icebreaker. You and told then me about some of your business stuff that you've done in the past. Like I didn't yeah, really know this her. This was the first time we were really talking to each yeah. other with the intention of actually getting to know each other on a much deeper level. Mm-hmm. And yeah a lot of the things i got to know about you they were all so sweet i loved it um so we went off from brunch and the next part is the funniest part to me yeah this was this was ballsy (laughs) yeah and this is honestly don't try this at home kids don't do it no do try it at home if you're like feeling ballsy i'm like very reserved as a dater i guess i would say so i got us a couple's massage at the best 
spa in Tulum. It was beautiful. It was, but before the massage, we had like our own private steam room and mm, sauna uh, steam room hot I tried tub. to kiss her yeah he tried to kiss me and i was like no you don't she didn't let me kiss her you don't get to kiss me <laughs> but yeah you know it only made me want it more i was like okay okay it's gonna be a little bit of work so then the next thing was like a private plunge pool where we got to like swim in a hot tub like before a massage treatment still got rejected when i tried okay, to, kiss trying to kiss me and then but respectfully yeah. i was never proposing yes yes and then we went and got our massage and she was like literally like because you know how massages are you usually without clothes a couple she's like massage. leave you have to leave so I that know, I, I was like turn around, turn around close your eyes around, yeah. i <laughs> i do not want to be undressed in front of you which was very fair yeah and um so yeah we basically got a couple's massage that was amazing from there I took you to lunch across at another beach club, oh, and then I we had, had the best burger. We had a sunset yeah. and dinner at, uh, above the jungle it at was a the private most beautiful little dinner. One of the most beautiful dinner. dinners I've ever had. Just yeah, remembering that. It was on beautiful. It. This we is had the best sunset. Should put the photo that we got our first yeah, ever it was so photo cute. together. Yeah, it's beautiful. I remember sending it to my dad, and my dad was like, "Whoa!" Like, what do you say? He was just very impressed. My dad's dinner? like, well done, son. You can pull, you know? Oh, me? <laughs> yeah, I sent a photo of my dad that, that that day. Okay, question. Did you ever send your dad a nope. photo of any other girls? No. No, it was just me. I had never... This was the most intentional date, I think, I first date I'd ever set up. The others were, like, like very, very, like, casual. Like, okay, you know, meet at, a, at the beach club for, for dr sunset and drinks or whatever. But this was, yeah, this was different. Really? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I put sweet. a lot more work into this one than any of them. And uh, yeah, it worked. And then the from the sunset dinner, we went and got Ruby her favorite thing in the world. Literally so four desserts. Sweet. I bought her the whole dessert menu. He then, took it seriously. He's like, you love dessert. I'm going to go take you to a spa. And I know so many desserts and we're going to buy you all of them. And that that won me over like that right there. Yeah. That won me over. And then <laughs> Ruby was like very like the whole time she was communicating. Like, I'm not the kind of person that like, you know, sleeps around. I'm not well, the kind of person. It's because you went on so many dates and I, I uh, saw like how you were in Tulum. So I just wanted to make sure. And with every day, I, I'm just here for some real human connection and to be very genuine and intentional with my time with somebody. I was very genuine and intentional with my connections, too. But I just, you know, this was different. I was like putting a lot of effort in. So, you know, Ruby, I, I get where she was coming from. I guess I looked for like for the first time in my life, I looked like a player, but I wasn't like I feel like I was making up for lost time in some sense. I was meeting a lot of people really in a short span of time. Okay. And um, anyways, all that to say, I she was kind of like telling me like, you know, like I really like she wouldn't even kiss me at this point. So I was like, OK, so like the whole date went on. I hadn't kissed him yet. No. And, and then we went to the like where i was staying we watched her favorite movie walter mitty yeah the, yeah you remember and then we yeah we i mean that was the end of the date that was basically the end of the date nothing you might be thinking oh <laughs> what happened next but yeah. to be honest ruby i don't know how much you want to say but she's not that kind of person at all like yeah until we became really like in a relationship committed to until one another he officially there was no until you there was no physical me. aspects to it yeah it was, uh, it was just purely getting to know each other and, and you, you made it very clear that unless there was commitment, there, there was nothing else. So that, w that mm -hmm. took, you know, a lot of time and, and love and energy and, and proving myself to you. So and it, was, it was a really long process of us actually uh, mm -hmm. starting to date. But it, very beautiful. But I did get a kiss after the first date. You did, yeah. Got a kiss then. Actually, he asked. He's like, when am I going to get a kiss? And then I felt bad. I was like, oh, you're right. Okay, I can kiss you now. Because she knew I had given her the best date of her life. Yeah. The helicopter, helicopter guy sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Um, so yeah, that was how we met. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, we just started hanging out. My friends all left to Loom. And I was going to leave with them, actually. Yeah. But then Christian asked me to stay longer and he said, please spend time with me. Yeah, I want got to a two get bedroom to know place, you. And I so and respectful. Your best friend stayed. That, that made me even fall more in love with you in that moment because I thought, wow, like this guy's so serious and he's so respectful and I really loved it. So mm -hmm. I spent another month with him in Tulum and that's the rest is history. We just started to get, a note yeah. to get to know each other a lot more. Literally, I asked her to be my girlfriend and then the next day I'm like, hey, I have to leave for Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> And she was probably thinking I'm leaving her. <laughs> Honestly, the timing was funny. I was like, hey, be my girlfriend. I'm like, I got to go. I got to leave the next and day, I, though. I had a thing, a campaign I had to go to. So uh, but in the end, I flew out to Dubai, I guess, a week later. Yeah, I went home. 
and got my stuff and left. Mm -hmm. and then so that's a long, <laughs> longer version of how we met. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it's a beautiful it didn't, story. it wasn't intentional. It, uh, I didn't even want to have a girlfriend for a long time. Mm -hmm, me too. I, 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 yeah, I was really not looking for it. We both really weren't. So that's why. Although I, think I just explained how much work I put into a date and everything. I've just, and I'm like, was I not looking for it? Maybe I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that we genuinely enjoyed each other's presence so much. Mm -hmm. And then we had that month of like getting to know each other. So And I thought you were the most beautiful person I've ever seen, so that didn't hurt either. Yeah. You're so sweet. Okay, so what does daily life look like in terms of a working day and in Bali? I always get up first. Mm -hmm. Ruby's like by far the sleepier of the two of us. I, li I like to be a night owl, so I usually so I. like go to bed later. So you're than always you. in bed up. You're always out before after me. Yeah, and I always wake up a bit later. Um I let you do your routine and then I wake up after. Mm -hmm. Not too much longer, but yeah. And then every Photo wakes different. me up at 7 a.m. He comes and he hits me with his paw in the face. Or, he, no, he actually does this thing where he like shakes his, yeah, his fur and like you so can hear cute. his ears flapping against his head. <laughs> and that's like my 7 a.m. alarm clock. Yeah. I open the door, let him outside because he's, he's started sleeping in our room. Mm -hmm. And then I get up about an hour later and then Ruby gets up 30 minutes later. Mm -hmm. We sometimes, better based on our schedule, we'll go to the gym together um Every breakfast different. sometimes weekdays are a little bit busy these days and we've kind of we don't really have as much routine as much as we usually do no. but the evenings are where we kind of get back home um we've reached we've been watching game of or uh, house of dragons yeah. in the evenings mm -hmm. or uh, another netflix show whatever is on at the time yeah we usually wa spend about an hour together um watching something or so, so i'd say every second day and then um we usually have dinner together mm -hmm. usually Always, usually and then Ruby cooks uh, dinner, s usually sometimes. Making sandwiches She's tonight. She's a really good cook. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, it's it's usually filled with work. Um, sometimes we try to have structure with like our workouts or mm -hmm. spending time with each other and doing something with friends. But it's a lot of work, especially for him. He has so much going on. And then Saturdays and Sundays, we He's usually take one so day off, s even even if it's a half day. Yeah. And then we'll we'll do like a beach club. We like. Uh, to get away to or if it's like a full like one or two day thing we'll go maybe to the north or somewhere yeah. on the island just to like have a proper hotel and escape kind of moment but, but we so usually like to we like to walk Koda on a every like two days a week we'll take him to the beach and just have like a sunset session yeah we yeah. love doing that but staying home is really nice because we're always traveling so nothing is better we love staying home mm -hmm. and we've got a really cozy townhouse so so fun to be home okay this what what do you argue and disagree on the most? I'm gonna let you answer this one first. Ruby leaves her Kleenexes all I over the house. I knew you were gonna it's say disgusting that. And I'm like, listen, guys, it's not Kleenex. Stop. It's not dirty wipes. It's so uh, my grandma had this habit of like, oh, she's always in the kitchen, and you'll notice like not only my Polish grandma but my Mexican grandma does this, where they'll always have like a a wet serviette in their hand because they're constantly cleaning around. Except you don't so clean anything. <laughs> Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. So I uh, that's why I'm constantly like leaving these little napkins around, but they're not they're not okay. Anyways, that's something we disagree on, which I've fixed because I know you don't like it. Yes, I have. Okay, you think about something. I'll think of something. Better. Um we disagree something. on movies all the time. But we've gotten that's better. That's true, actually. Yeah, movies. We have we, different tastes. Yeah. Kind of. We come in the middle a lot, but also like yeah. we just have different I have moods. like impeccable taste and Ruby lacks it no, altogether. No. So <laughs> I have the best taste in movies. Um, I live where Hollywood was created. I have the best taste in movies. I think the thing that creates the most arguments is that our perception of reality tends to be quite different. That's a really good way of putting it. Um, so Ruby will say she said something and I'll be like, you never said that. Or and I'm like, like, yes, I did. And then vice versa. But you don't understand what I just said. Doesn't you're perceiving it the wrong way or you're understanding it the wrong way. Our so methods of communication are very different. We're and that causes that. problems for sure. Like I'm very literal. If I say like, yeah. you know, y uh, you know, I think you need to work on this. She might hear it as you're saying I'm the worst. And, <laughs> and like she, that's her truth. And my truth is what I said. I still think I'm more right than her, but I have to learn to be open to her right as well, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of the joke. Thanks for. Uh, but, but also sort of kind of true. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I think that is definitely number one for yeah. us, well, which we're working on it. And the fact that we're acknowledging it is really awesome. Too. But it's a serious problem, actually. Like it is. It causes deep arguments because how like when you have problems and they're bound to happen when you're with somebody all the time and you're building a life with somebody. It's hard when when the communication barrier seems to be so real sometimes. So 
we've had massive fights over it and i think well we're they're just misunderstandings in the end sure and just having and like they, the patience to listen to what we yeah. actually feel and want to communicate to each other mm -hmm. but yes yeah, so that would be I think the important thing though is like the takeaway that we had even just the other day we were fighting over this was we said you know no matter what if you feel like you're hurt by your partner because they said something that didn't f feel right or you you and understood you, as you have to be the one to let them know kindly why that is that you feel that way because if you let that if you assume the worst in your partner then you're always going to be the one who tries to one up them in anger or in frustration and yeah. that just creates a spiral i think the thing so yeah that's that's a that's a real takeaway the most important thing to know is that in a relationship it's not you and me versus each other it's us against the problem and i think that that's a really important thing to realize in a relationship when you're arguing because often you'll be arguing against me and yeah very well said so next question is how do you keep your relationship strong mm. i think that we are we communicate we're very physically and like personality wise we're very compatible because um ruby is very feminine i'm very masculine Ruby is very submissive. I'm very dominant. We're kind of like positive and negative forces attracted by nature. I think that that's like one piece of it. Yeah. Um, but like, I'll talk about this, how we actually put in work to make it strong too. Yeah. I, what about, what about you? Well, for me, it's, um, we are very open with our communication. Like we will be brutally honest about mm. things. And I think that's so important. Even if sometimes hearing the truth of that person, it, can be hurtful it's important to know how they feel yeah. and whenever you do feel that to bring it up because it's actually very toxic to harvest bad feelings towards your partner because then it just builds up resentment so we're just very communicative and very understanding and we've gotten so much more patient with each other and I think the most important thing that has made our relationship stronger within this past especially like six months is just understanding our way of loving each other. So like love mm. languages and really putting time and effort into fulfilling those needs for your partner and vice versa. So I feel like we've really gotten very deep into what mm -hmm. makes me happy and what I need from you and you as well. And I, yeah. I think that has really helped our relationship flourish. I think that I'm on my, I would say third real strong, like long-term relationship where you know, I'm trying to do life with this person. I'm learning with every every day, with every mistake, you know. And so I know that in the past, I've always assumed that the way I do things has to be the best way for my partner because it's working well for me. It should work well for them. But I think where I've been really good at the question is, how do we build a strong relationship? I, I mm -hmm. think, right? Yeah. Um, the way I, I've tried to strengthen our relationship is by not forcing the same ideals onto my partner. So I work a lot and I put in a lot of time and energy. And instead of just assuming that's what she has to do, I actually kind of empower her to do more of the things she loves. So that's like doing time at the gym, uh, going and doing acro or, you know, you've been doing pole dancing. Like I empower her to do more of the things that she loves because if she's happy, then she comes home and, and then she's happier around me. And like, mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful thing is like, um, even kind of uh, we have a little bit of like almost like a traditional relationship in the sense that you're I like that. I do too like Ruby's Ruby's very serving and very loving like I come home and she massages me and she cooks for me and she's this most days very tender loving <laughs> fragile not fragile very feminine very um, very soft person and uh, and I find that when I try to like back in even when we first started I was trying to like force a square through a circle hole mm. uh you were doing less of the things that i i found attractive too because i was you were stressed by by either overwork or like trying to become something that you didn't really feel was right for you mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. i think that accepting the partner as they come is probably one of the best ways to strengthen that relationship it doesn't mean you can't ask improvements and for areas of yes, of, of course uh mm -hmm. openness but yeah yeah communicating it's like yeah, number communication one communication is the number thing yeah so but yeah the, the, I, I agree like we're very honest about everything um like even if it means like you know there's nothing off limits uh, like at all you yeah. could talk about how 
you know we're so open you I'm could you could say anything to me and i would not take offense i'd be like i'm glad you're doing that because it's for the embetterment of us as a couple okay next question okay this one is so popular <laughs> yeah. when are you getting married you first okay so I, i'm very happy to say that christian and i are on the exact same page with this question and it makes me very happy um so we are still so young we are only 25 and 29 and although it would be a dream, hopefully one day to get married, because that's the goal of our relationship, we're working towards that goal. That's like the end goal plus the family afterwards. If um, th that's the goal, uh, but for us, we're just taking we're taking our time. We're taking it day by day because we have so much that we need to accomplish first in our career goals and our personal lives. Like there, there's just no time for that right now. And that's not what we want right now. We really just want to enjoy each other's company. And hopefully one day when we feel ready, that's, that's the goal. So. Yeah. I think that's pretty spot on with me too. It's just, yeah. it's not a rush because for me to make Ruby feel safe, to let her know she's loved doesn't require a government to step in and exactly. say that this is a legally binding marriage. It's it's like it's more about what we do in our time together. And, and mm -hmm. I think that that's something where we're we're always striving towards is just making each other feel heard, respected and loved in our relationship. And yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much as much as I need to say. It's yeah. One day. Marriage is not the success. The success mm -hmm. is having a healthy and happy and loving relationship. Yeah. Okay. So next question. How did you guys cope with long distance months due to travel, business, etc.? cetera? Mm. It's a big one. As well. I think that I'm so busy and invested and in love with my work that when I am apart from my partner, my world doesn't come crumbling down. That's just so important because I used to be in a long distance relationship in my prior relationship and it was a very long one and I didn't really have a sense of purpose. I didn't know what my purpose in that moment was. So I found that I would feel so, it was really rough for me, but in this relationship, the best part about it is that we don't have constant long distance. We have little spurs of it because mm -hmm. I go visit family and he does the same. What or was the longest we've been? I mean, technically we were long Nine distance months? for like nine months, but we were still visiting each other for a week or two at a time. Yeah. But the longest we've been is two months without seeing each other. Something like that. Yeah. 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 No. So I, and I think that also, um, like I've been in, in situations in my life where I was like stressing about like, okay, it was my partner being loyal to me and that makes long distance really hard with you. I don't have a, f a single concern in the world. Like you are in a environment where you're surrounded by the ultra successful in LA, you're surrounded by, uh, you know, all sorts of temptation, if you will. But uh, because of who you are, I just don't have any concern about it. Yeah. Christian's yes. like not a jealous boyfriend or possessive in any way. He's, and it's so nice. It's so wonderful to have someone by your side who really trusts you with every fiber of their being. Mm -hmm. And that makes me feel so, so good. Like, that's one of my favorite qualities about him. I think um, to answer that question, though, yeah, like uh, we I, I really like to keep myself just focused on um, growing, yeah. building my business, um, you know, when we're doing long distance, we keep up with each other through daily FaceTimes. Mm -hmm. Watching and, a movie um, together, having a little night in together if it's, you know, for mm -hmm. a long time. It's, but it's work. It, it takes is. work. But uh, it's uh, it's worth the wait. And and I know that having dated before now, I've, I've done the casual, I've done the committed relationships. And I kind of, I feel like having experienced all sides of it, like I'm like, I know what I have is more valuable than anything else. So even for me, the temptation's not there to be like, oh, like, you know, can I wait the next month or can I go without seeing her? Because when she, when we're together, it's it's uh, it outweighs all those other options. Yeah. So I'd say having purpose and trust are like the two biggest yeah, things. Complete trust, complete transparency. Having your own life. That's like the best thing in a relationship is just transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next question. Favorite adventure together. This you first. Hard. I don't know. I like we, we have, you know, that's the thing. We have more adventures together than your average person and couple than anyone than anybody, because this is what we do. And it's so wonderful that there's so many memories coming up in my mind. And 
oh, they're so great. For me, it's Nihi. Because like that, that was one of the amazing. best moments of my life. Um, I had 10 people that I love just, you know, with me mm -hmm. there to celebrate my birthday. I had the opportunity to kind of set up the collaboration all under my, you know, everyone had a few deliverables because they were all for the most part creators, but I was able to bring my friends on this out of this world experience. And we all just had this beautiful bonding moment. And, uh, yeah, that was that mm -hmm. sunset on my birthday was honestly one of the most amazing moments in my life. That was the, I turned 27 that year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was amazing. I don't know. I mean, there's so many. But if I had to choose a memorable experience, that's one of my favorite ones. I, Man, I don't know. I'd have to say, honestly, I just think being able to experience going to... Um, oh, what North makes us argue? I just remembered another one. You're indecisive. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> that's my problem, though. How can you be mad at something I can't control? That's my favorite adventure. Sorry, we have so many. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Um, I think like Kenya was amazing. Just mm -hmm. the whole Kenya adventure. Cause we did so many amazing things. And that was, Manor was so cool. that was always his dream. And it's always been my dream and wild animals and uh, Kenya. It was just so cool. Yeah, it was. Got to work with some amazing properties, see amazing animals. Yeah, it was just so fun. Mm -hmm. And also <laughs> TMI, but it was really fun getting to know my partner on another level because like there's no privacy in the bathrooms. So yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah most of the i don't know why but east africa they just don't put doors on the bathrooms and you're like oh hey just i'll be over here for yeah a little bit yeah so yeah that's my favorite adventure that's too much transparency <laughs> okay so next is will you have kids yes i would love to have kids mm -hmm. how many two to three yeah girl three boy. is three is like i've made it Four is like, okay, I, I did something and we, we hit the jackpot lotto and we have the support to do that. But I think two to three feels right. Yeah, same. I'm exactly the same way. Um, mm. Although like the idea of having a really big family of like six kids seems so beautiful to me. But yeah, no, I think the perfect amount is like two to three. If That's I, your Mexican side speaking. Yeah, my mom, my grandma has 12 kids. So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> no, we're on the same page. And then when, whenever it feels right, whenever that is. Yep. There's not for no a while. pressure. Yeah. We have a lot to do right I now. I would so. not be able to give the amount of energy and love that Having I need. Having Coda already is so much work. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to do it at a uh, place where I feel like I can mm -hmm. be there 100% because, yeah. you know, it's enough to have a dog and, and make sure you're there for the dog, but let alone like to raise kids, you have to truly be hands on. Yeah. Um, Our goal is just to be able yeah. to be completely independent and have enough time and to give all of our love to our children because mm -hmm. that's just the, the best way to do it. So we would love that. We're going to wait. Yeah. And then next question is okay this is also a juicy one a lot of you guys ask <laughs> does he fund your travels i mean Take you can away, answer maybe. okay so um he she funds my travels yeah i fund his entire life i'm his sugar mama to be honest mm -hmm. you guys um i was i inherited a lot of money so no, i'm kidding <laughs> so basically my partner over here his whole entire life has been built through YouTube and being a travel vlogger. So before I met him, I did travel a lot and I went on many adventures and that was also my job. But meeting him, he brought a whole nother level of traveling to my life, which I'm so appreciative of um, because he lives and breathes traveling, which is amazing because I love it so much. But he has a very big career and his his schedule is filled with needing to go to this country, go to this place, go see this, the other place. And, you know, he is, we're lucky enough where he can fund our relationship in the traveling sense because he has brands asking him to go here, there, and he brings me along with him. And sometimes I'll get the campaigns as well. Sometimes I won't. And maybe he'll ask me if I just want to come along and experience it. So yeah, his career is much farther than mine. So I'm lucky to be able to have a partner that I can just join along his adventures. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's basically it. <laughs> You're like a real YouTuber. You learn how to take an answer and hide it at the end. Oh, really? You give an extended response that basically <laughs> doesn't get to the point until the very end. I learned from go. the best. Yes, uh, the, my channel <laughs> is uh, funding all of our travels. Yes. Okay, so next question is, what's our ethnicity or, or origin and religious beliefs? I'm white. Yeah. 
So th- this is a good one because we realized, um, you know, as you start to date people, it's so important to know what their background is because sometimes you'll grow up with certain uh, a certain set of beliefs and values that's very different from the person you're attracted to. Mm-hmm. So I grew up yep. with uh, a Mexican family who it has a very big family and we're very traditional Um, also my Polish side of my family, also very traditional. So that's, that's how I grew up and Mm -hmm. you grew up how? Yeah, I grew up in, um, like starting off kind of lower mid to eventually middle class family. Um, and I grew up in Canada. Both parents are from Canada. So I, I kind of feel like my ethnicity is, is quite, um, it doesn't have the same vibrancy as Ruby's does. Like Canadians, we're just very predictable. We're very kind, <laughs> polite. I grew up in a very conservative home. I love Canada, um, though. Extremely Christian upbringing. Like uh, I wasn't allowed to uh, play Pokemon cards because they were the spawn of Satan. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to have like my sweet cereal unless it was Saturday or Sunday. So, so I had a very like um, kind of regimented and and very strict upbringing in fact i remember like one time my my friends wanted me to come over for a movie when i was younger and my parents would ask the parents of the of the kid what movie are they going to watch and they would take that name and then they'd go to a website called olsen on your side or something like that (laughs) and in it uh or no keeping up with the family or i forget they would search it and the name would basically then trigger a, a review from like the most strict like christian standards of all time and it'd be like uh you know this movie is pg-13 at the 17 minute mark in two seconds you'll see a uh, partial nudity of a man's behind yeah. and like i wouldn't be allowed to go over to my friend's house <laughs> to so see that crazy. movie so i had a very um that was my structured, upbringing but two upbringing. very loving parents um and yeah it's uh R- ruby and i have had extremely different upbringings yeah um i would had no like my parents were amazing and i had no structure in the sense that they just completely and fully trusted me to do anything i wanted and thankfully i was a great child i never did anything wrong i was always a good girl I was a always spoiled <laughs> for a little bit a but lot. no i turned out to be um i'm really grateful for my upbringing so yeah, no structure for me, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a really big family, really big Mexican but family. Mexican um, beliefs, and, or not beliefs, um, traditions, and, and yeah. like that impacts the way you look at life versus the way I look at life. So how would you say it affects a relationship? Like, Well, one thing that um, is definitely kind of the most differing is like I grew up in a very Canadian upbringing where men and women are like they are essentially meant to grow up and be the same people. You know, the women can go be a doctor or an accountant. The man can go be a stay home mom if you or dad if he wants. And that's like kind of the Canadian way of doing things like. But with the Mexican upbringing, it's like, you know, men are to provide for women. Women are to like be service oriented for their husband. Is that fair to say? I think it's very fair to say. Yes and no, depending. My family obviously cared about that a lot, but. I mean, I was supported to become a lawyer or a doctor or the president of the United States, obviously. It was by no means that traditional. Um, But it was definitely in the sense that, you know, the male, the man is, you know, the the head of the household. The woman is a supporter, also the head of the household. But having, like, a very strong male figure, like, that's something that I grew up with and I like. So whenever, you know, what I look for in a partner is to have like a strong male figure who will Mm. always be there for me honestly like the instincts come in like i want someone i want a provider i want ruby wants a provider and i think that sometimes that created also like difficulties in, in understanding each other because uh my norm was that the woman would be 50 50 they'd be they'd be providing just as much 50 in different ways they'd be providing like just as much you know focusing on their careers just as much as I would. And I actually kind of wanted that at first. Mm -hmm. And then I had a a relationship that kind of had a bit of that. And I realized it actually wasn't the right fit for me. And then by the time I found Ruby, like Ruby was like very different. And it was like, again, this was a dynamic where I felt like I was being put in the position of being the head of the house way more than I'd ever been in any other prior relationship. But because I also had the means to do that, um it felt like the right fit and it also has been 
a, it's a process of learning mm -hmm. because at first it was kind of strange to experience being like, you know, again, funding travels, funding other elements because I can, because, you know, Ruby has chosen to be here with me instead of being in Los Angeles making money as an actress or, yeah, or doing... When we first dated, it was really hard because I was just completely plucked out of my reality mm -hmm. onto a small island and all my my life was funded through living in Los Angeles, modeling, acting, doing all these different jobs. So yeah. he definitely uh, showed up for me and he took lead because but that took learning. It took learning, though, because it, it was a bit it was most uncomfortable at the start of our relationship. Yeah, and then we started to finding our boundaries and finding mm -hmm. our what what felt right. Um, but it's important to but we were open to trying it and, yeah. and getting to this point now. It it feels like, you know, I love that you're you're we found available. a good balance. When I come home. Yeah. You're like, you know, you're obviously you you have your life. You're not just waiting at home, but <laughs> you're more readily available to be there for me. Yes. And like, you're also very loving and like, you know, she makes the best food. And, and <laughs> I love that if I'm like, hey, we're we're going to go. We have a campaign like she's ready to go. And we, if we. Yeah. So it's a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. Every relationship will have their thing that works for them. But this has been. Uh, through learning, through patience and communication, we've gotten to a place where despite having different upbringings, values and things that we're looking for, we kind of found a way to bring that to a place where we're able to be at peace and, and help each other out. And it's been so good. We finally yeah. found like, a really good balance. So, yeah, I'm very happy. And I like being the head of the house. It makes yeah, me feel good. And I like being there for you. Yeah. I, it's honestly like modernized traditional. That's what it is. Yeah. And I love it. That's a topic for another day, but I think that there's this like, I actually think that it's a good system where there's like one person in, in like, not that the other person can't be in charge. Of course, yeah. none of this is black and white. It's always, it's always like there's somewhere in the middle, but I like the social structure of having like, you know, the feminine energy being that's the one important. that's like more nurturing, more, yeah. more supportive. And usually that means the masculine energy has to be usually the financial provider or the one that's making the big decisions for the home. I think that system works really well. And like, um, that's a topic for another day, but yeah. <laughs> next. Okay. So next question is how to avoid cheating. I think that, uh, the best thing that leads to strength in a relationship, we've said it a hundred times is just transparency. Like mm -hmm. cheating is often led is caused by somebody not being able to express themselves, not being able to be honest with their partner. Yes. And because of that, like, you know, the lack of transparency they go and do things behind their partner's mm. back so things that help you avoid that are being brutally honest even when it's going to be uncomfortable and harmful or hurtful for your partner to hear yes. better they hear it and you know you either go separate ways mm -hmm. you decide this relationship's not working um or you know uh the other thing being maturity i think just like Absolutely. when you're young especially like you know I've been that person where I've, I've been so curious about like, what would life be like on the other side? Like, what would it be like to have, you know, uh, a, a friendship, a partnership with different, you know, kinds of people that curiosity is like one of the most, uh, I think toxic things if you try to hold on to it during a relationship. So I think that like for me, maturity gave me so much more stability in my relationship that came through age, that came through mistakes, that came through just being incredibly honest with Ruby when like, you know, we, we don't have to go behind each other's backs because we just tell it like it is. And we know that if it ever got to a place where like we met another person that was better for us, we would just be honest and yeah. be like, look, that's the way it is. This mm -hmm. is the person I need to be with. And you, you would do that because you respect your partner and you, you love that person. And the best thing you can do is just say it even when it doesn't feel right or when it doesn't feel easy to say. I mean, for me, it's... I'm for a you, it's easy because you're with me and there's no temptation. <laughs> uh huh. So, yeah. For me, um, I mean, I'm a very emotional person. So this is a very logical explanation and this is exactly how I would describe it as well. But for me, the emotional aspect comes into play because I feel a lot and I could never imagine hurting somebody, somebody that I really love so deeply in that way. So for me, it's not only the logical aspect, but I just would never want to put myself in a place where I will ever feel 
the pain and the regret of hurting somebody that I love. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just having, once again, the maturity to be so open and honest with your partner about your current feelings and your current state of mind and discussing with them what it is that you're thinking and how you can go about this. Because, yeah, life is so easy if you can just be so honest with yourself and those around you. Just make it easy. Don't, you know... What it, what's the saying? Beat around the bush. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, just make it easier for yourself. Be an honest, kind, good, just person. And yeah. yeah, just don't cheat. It's that easy. You have to really put a lot of energy into cheating. Like, it takes a lot of, like, maneuvering and lying and remembering this and doing that and hiding. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just easier to be an honest person. Next question is, how many serious relationships have you had? I've had three, I'd say. Um, yeah, the one in high school where I dated a girl basically just to be in the cool group, that didn't really count. <laughs> I think it lasted a week and then, or no, it lasted about a month and then I got a phone call one night. She was at a concert and I could hear all her friends in the background. She's like, yeah, this isn't this isn't working. And I was like, okay, sweet. Hung up my home phone. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I was at like upstairs in my mom and dad's room taking the call. But anyways, that didn't count. So yeah, I've had three uh, serious relationships. One was five and a half, six years. When did you start dating? Three years. We're currently on two years. So I've been dating since 18 and I basically have not had more than six months single in those spans of time. But Mm. um, those six months were valuable. You know, I I learned a lot about myself and it also helped me to be a better partner for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I I don't feel the curiosity I did. Like, honestly, I, I just feel very stable in our relationship because you know even though we have our days where we fight Mm -hmm. it's it's just like it's always just a matter of like trying to make it better with you we don't give up on it yeah 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 i have had only one and it was a long one i started when i was just under 18 we're not serious (laughs) this is the second one prior and yeah that lasted for i think four to five years and then i had just under a year to be single and then I met Christian. So now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. High five. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. So next question is, how do you guys keep things spicy? You first. Uh, I want to hear you say it. Mm, how do I keep things spicy? Mm-hmm. Well, I know that like my lifestyle definitely allows us to experience all sorts of new things. So yeah, that is true. Like, you know, whether I'm traveling to africa and bringing her with me or whether you know we we want to do a weekend getaway to see them in here in bali like i know that i'm able to either through money or just through uh, collaborations i can get us opportunities to be somewhere that just brings a new excitement into us breaks us away from our normal is really what it is um so that's definitely one thing I like to think that, uh, you know, I, I put in a bit of time and energy to keep myself presentable. I think it's my responsibility to my partner and to myself mm-hmm. to make sure that my outside reflects my inside. Yeah. Um, so I don't ever, ever want to let go of that. I don't think it matters if you've been dating for, you know, two months or whether you've been married for 10 years. I think you really owe it to your partner to to make yourself, to yourself presentable. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about you? How do I keep things spicy? You are, Ruby's a very, very um, loyal person. And, you know, I don't even know how much you want to divulge, but I'll say that she's had two partners and that's, those are the only two people she's ever been physical with. Am I fair to say that? I know I've only had one partner and then you. Yeah, I'm one of those two. Two in total in my life. (laughs) And I love, um, like, despite that, you... You, you're just like you're an all in kind of person like mm-hmm. I, you'll do whatever ever is is like, you know, going to make your partner happy. So you're you're very, very like it's the sexiest thing. She's like the most mm-hmm. beautiful girl and she'll cook food for me. She'll make herself all pretty and get herself all done up. I'll happily be part of, of uh, getting her whatever makes her feel pretty. And it's just. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out our, our limits here, what we He's say. trying to dance around the, the you yeah, know, let's not go any further. But you, <laughs> you keep it spicy. Mm-hmm. You do. And you're always open to trying new things, doing new, th- like, I don't mm-hmm. know. You're very, uh, you're very uh, much, not a pleaser, but you know how to 
make me feel good. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the biggest thing of like balancing masculine and feminine qualities within each other because he makes it feel like I am safe and I have time and I want to give him my effort to make him happy. So that gives me just so much more energy and the want to go out there and explore like how can I keep my man happy? Like that's the biggest thing for me is I really love I love love. I love my relationship. I love my partner. It's one of my favorite things. So I try my best to always think of things or uh, as big or as small as they can be to make him happy. So for example, like I figured out a few months ago that it means so much to him when I like make him a smoothie or when I cook him a sandwich or when I just think of things that he would have normally do massages, you know, and like that to him, it makes him so soft. Massages, yeah. yeah. It makes him so soft and so happy. And in return, I get what I need from him, all the love and all the, the softness from him. You keep so. using the word soft. It's kind of a, f- sorry. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. We just, I don't know, you j- sometimes I'll do like little surprise days where, you know, once I, I took him like paragliding, mm-hmm. you know, or like for our anniversary, uh, I like to go all out for our anniversary. So surprises, I love surprising him, even though he doesn't really like surprises that like surprises. much. It's actually my love language, but it makes me happy. So who doesn't like surprises? That's so weird. That's just so weird. Like that makes me so happy. Hmm. Yeah, that's nice. that's how we keep it spicy one or two What's more? The, that's a good one what's the best thing about christian that seems like a really good question mm. oh god this is about to become a three-hour podcast ah <laughs> uh, the best thing about christian honestly do like relationship wise or person i think they mean relationship i guess okay i love just how much of a man he's become that to me is like my favorite thing is watching him blossom. Cause like he said, he was in a place where we met where he was learning more about himself and Mm -hmm. developing more. And, you know, like we said, you know, it took a while to understand what, how our traditional values and beliefs would mesh together and work well. And he has blossomed into such a beautiful man where I feel so secure and so safe and I feel loved. And every single day, it's such a joy to wake up next to him. He's always the one that's so so excited in the morning. He's like, let's wake up. And it's always different. It's always new. He keeps things spicy. He is so funny. (laughs) so funny such dry humor it took a long time for me to like understand it understand i still don't um because i'm so gullible like i need things to be so plain for me to understand but i've learned to really appreciate his humor and yeah i just feel like this is my rock and he's my safe place and i love that Mm. yeah i love you i love you yeah (laughs) Mm. so what about me what about me? Yeah. Mm, tell me. Tell me about me. Uh huh. Um, Ruby is the most loyal person on the planet. I think that's like even going back to like the long distance thing. Like, I just feel no matter where we are, no matter what situation, like I don't have any energy being consumed by self doubt or doubt that like not self doubt doubt that she's, you know, in it for the long run or in it for for our long our our well being. Like I just know that even when things get hard and they do like, I know we've been gone going on about all these great things. We have really hard moments in our mm-hmm. relationship, but, uh, the loyalty is so ki- critical because I know that at the end of the day, like as long as we both are here putting in the work, like we're going to be there giving it our all. You give it your all. You really do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean we always like, you know, have the, the outcomes we're looking for. Um, but you're very passionate about, this relationship and you're passionate about working for us and and she's the most stunning person I've ever seen like beautiful incredible uh kisser and hugger Mm -hmm. and lover and yeah I just I don't know there's so much Mm -hmm. we're we're very very compatible I love your hair Thank you. And I love her eyebrows. Her eyebrows are probably <laughs> my favorite. Yeah, and I ask them, like, as you start dating, you ask each other questions. Mm-hmm. Like, what's my favorite? What's your favorite feature about me? He's like, your eyebrows. I'm like, who says that? 
I mean, yes, they have been a very great thing to have in my modeling career, but like for my boyfriend to say that is really sweet. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the next question? There's so many. Depends what you want to. We'll do one more. Okay. Let's but make it good. Because <laughs> there's a lot of drama questions. If you want to, we can. All right. So there's like five, maybe 10 people asking how often we get intimate. I don't know why that's your so turn. Curious answer. to you. <laughs> um, I feel like I know we have a very healthy and thriving, flourishing, fun, excitable relationship. I think it um, it flourishes even more when I'm not building something like a product or this, like launching something. Like those are the periods where I'm just like fully in my work, mm-hmm. and our intimacy does take a hit, but. Mm-hmm. I'd say when we're in a like a good week, it's it's for sure daily. Like we are. <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. Like every day. But no, it's it's so beautiful. We've been we've been doing this thing. I've been doing this thing. It's a guy's thing where I yeah, actually we can talk about that. Uh, retain. I don't actually um, finish, if you will. So that has uh, the longest I'd ever done. It was about a month. And because of that, like it actually makes me as a man feel so much more filled with like testosterone, which is amazing. Like I, I was playing paddle and I felt like I was the best I'd ever been. I go to work, I feel focused. I feel so like strong and, and just honestly, even more uh, focused than usual. And that has been also really fun for us too. It takes a little getting used to because like, obviously, you know, when you're getting intimate, sometimes the best, or at least what you think is the most fun part is the end. But it doesn't have to be that way, to be honest. It, it Not finishing is actually one of the most amazing things a guy can try. Uh, I also kind of want to make a video about that for the Lost LeBlanc channel someday. I don't know if I'll do it, but I, I think, think it's a cool topic because it, it teaches you a lot about yourself and it shows you that what you think intimacy has to be doesn't have to be like that. I and think it's also very helpful if you're... Let me catch up with her a little bit. <laughs> a re- I want it just as much as her. <laughs> if you're in a relationship and you see... Because we see a lot of each other at times. Like, obviously, we'll be gone doing our own thing. Like, if I'm visiting my family or work or whatever... But since we do spend a lot of time together, that's a really good way to like keep things spicy and keep things exciting. Mm-hmm. Like if, if I do it, sometimes like multiple times a day. Okay, we're going to stop there. <laughs> Obviously, these are topics that like, you know, we would talk about with our friends. But when it's on camera, it does feel a little harder. Yeah. Um, especially like even going back to like, you know, I was raised in a, a home where like, this is something that you don't talk about. And and so it does make it a little tricky for both of us. But yeah, hopefully you guys appreciate the openness because it's how we treat each other. We're extremely open and transparent with all of our friends with, yeah. you know, we want to be that same way with you. Um, definitely. You don't have to agree with everything that was said, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this first little chat, a uh, bit of a behind the scenes to this beautiful and imperfect relationship. Love this woman so much. And uh, I think that we're, we're working together to try and make it a stronger relationship every day. And um, I'm very grateful for her. Love you. Love you too. Yeah, it was fun. You guys are we always asking go. questions. So you guys, thank you. If you guys have stuck out the whole video, I hope you guys had fun um, and like a closer look into our relationship and who we are as people. All right, you guys have Bye. a great rest of your day.